In February 1881, Edison left his workbench at Menlo Park behind and began spending his days in New York in an elegant brownstone at 65 Fifth Avenue, wired with some 200 lamps to serve as both showplace and headquarters for the Edison Electric Light Company. By then, the inventor's pledge to electrify Lower Manhattan had been stalled for more than two years, while his team grappled with the challenges of designing the world's first electrical power grid. My light is perfected, Edison said. I'm going into the practical production of it. With his family ensconced in a suite of rooms in a nearby hotel, the inventor plunged in. This was not a science experiment. This was a business trying to get a significant return on a significant amount of capital investment. So Edison had to follow the light bulb all the way to its full realization. On Pearl Street in the heart of Manhattan's financial district, two adjoining warehouses now would be transformed into Edison's central power station, equipped with six steam engine dynamo sets weighing some 30 tons each, as well as switchboards and control instruments and a bank of 1,000 lamps for testing the system. Meanwhile, nearly 80,000 feet of copper conductors would be laid below the surrounding streets. Ultimately, Edison planned to supply electricity to a swath of city blocks a mile square and provide light to every subscribing home and business in the district with the simple flip of a switch. It was massive all of the different problems that he had to solve. But being Edison, he just very steadily pushed through. First, New York City officials had to be convinced of the wisdom of running electric current underground before they awarded Edison the permit to tear up the streets. Lamps, meters, and the other system components had to be mass produced. And it fell to Edison to oversee the factories. It was, as his secretary noted, a gigantic undertaking, one that required the inventor to be administrator, manufacturer, and salesman all at once. And on top of everything, there were the money men, as Edison called them, who never failed to provide distraction. 